See, they probably would be disappointed. Castlewood 23, Lake Norton 15. Ball goes up at center. They don't speak for milk. Do they speak for sugar? Do they speak for sugar beets and sugar cane farmers? Or at all? They got a specialty. They got the Brandon plant. Sugar's got the Brandon plant. Well, they don't call it the Brandon plant and sugar. They got a sweeter name for it than Brandon. But it shows you how fairly dishonest this thing is. Because in sugar, there's an import duty paid and an excise tax paid. The sugar gets taxed twice. It comes in here and once it's locally produced, and that oil goes into a jackpot and it's dispersed to, to, to the producers of sugar cane and sugar beets. They've had it for 15 years. And I was adding up the other day. The amount they've collected and handed out, Olive Brandon, is now past the billion dollar mark. And the last time the act was up, it went unanimously through the House, not one representative voted against it, and only four senators. And I'm going to ask you, is sugar legislated? Tobacco's got a special deal. Is it legislated? Uh, the milk sheds have got a special deal. Is it legislated? <laughs> well, where's your free enterprise system? There isn't any such a thing as a free enterprise system, except for a poor guy or a girl who works in somebody's office and hopes to gosh that you'll pay them enough so they can uh, buy the food and clothes and have a room and get along. But for any substantial business in this country, there is no such a thing as a free enterprise system because our economy has drifted to a place where it doesn't work. Doesn't work. So farmers, unless they have the power to meet the push ball, unless they can meet the push ball and produce a little bunch of balls at a price, they're going to get put, going to get just run over by that push ball. They're going to get squashed. The farm bureau says this is what we want. Well, I'll take. I wish I had this on par, and I happen to have it here for a week. By January 1st, 1954, without going into a lot of discussion, the new Perry formula is in full effect. After that date, you have a surplus of wheat, then your spurt price goes down. At 75% of the new parity, at Aberdeen, the wheat price would be, the loan would be $1.59. At 90% of the old parity, $2.20. Will 61 cents a bushel make any difference to the wheat growers up in your area, Mr. Downey? Well, for the fellow that's got a little off-grade stuff, just a wee bit off, long down the loan. And that's where you get trimmed in the cash market. His stuff won't quite grade and run of the loan. With the trimmings they put on, you get a dollar thirty-six. Where's he coming out? In Montana, it goes down to a dollar ten. Do you think one half of farmers could stay on the land at these prices? And that they could stay on. What's the point in producing them, re reducing them to a subsistence level? And dare them to stay on the land and barely have enough to wear it, even so. What kind of a cockeyed economy is that? If somebody will demonstrate to us that parity is all wrong and a new parity ought to be here at a farmer's, the family tank farmer can live and live in reasonable comfort. With lesser prices, we'll go for that. But we can't find no, we can't find a group of farmers that can take it. And by the way, uh, it's very difficult to get costs out of these agricultural colleges because they weren't set up to make costs. They're set up to better strains of seed, and better breeds of push balls, better this, and better that. But no, no, no cost, no cost accounting. But with the GI loans, that's different. And we took several groups of GI loans in Minnesota that are supervised. And at the full impact, 
for the feed grains under the 49 Farm Act and those lowest support prices, there wasn't one GI guy that could stay on the land under those or the low prices. And I so testified the other day before the Senate committee. Couldn't stay there. If this law isn't amended, we're agreeing we live under a legislated economy. The only way the farm family can stay there and buy the push ball and live and educate his kids is to have a price that he can collect for what he produces so he pay for it. It's as simple as that. So he's been spending all afternoon talking about that. It's that simple. But the Farm Bureau says this is the way to do it. And we say that's the way, and that's the road to degradation and the bumping off of half of these farmers off the land. Maybe you've got a, maybe you've got a different type of agriculture in South Dakota. Maybe they can take it better than they can in Minnesota. I've been spending my time on Minnesota studies. And I think Minnesota is as good an ag state as this. Maybe they don't have as big farms. But they appear to be as prosperous in Minnesota as you are out here. And I assume that you need prices out here as well as you do in Minnesota. You need them in Montana, you need them in North Dakota. I've had some figures there. The best farm check I had in Montana is a big farm in the family. To give that fellow $5,000 a year, out of which pay income taxes and insurance and little saving and educate kids and so forth and left, the best farming operation I checked, he had to have a dollar and 81 cents a bushel of his farm to get that. So what do we, what do we fight for? Immediately, what are we fighting for? We're fighting to protect the farmers against the imposition of this 1949 act that will be upon us when the national emergency is over. The only reason farmers aren't feeling it today as much as they would feel it is because there is a national emergency and the secretary is asking for all our production and he's holding these support prices at the limit of the law. That right now, it's the limit. If we had peace in Korea, and we had peace in Europe, <coughs> that everybody wants and prays for, some people pray for it. Everybody wants it, we have it. And we drop point for program and drop the international wheat agreement, then the Secretary of Agriculture no longer has an excuse with no national emergency. He has to let this 49 Farm Act find its place and live according to the law. And that law is bankruptcy for half of the farmers of this country. Is that something to fight about? Is that something to know? Is that something to go out here across these prairies and tell them the story? We keep publishing it in the papers. We show the effect of this law, what will happen. And what do you think that will do to our cooperatives? What will that do to the local oil station? What's it already doing? You're already feeling it, aren't you? Because of these lower feed prices. You see, this 5%, we've been having, uh, we've been having a cut on, on barley and oats right along under this new system, 5% a year, this new parity. That's already moving down. And then we've had soft corn, we've had bad weather in some of the wheat country, and things are getting sloppy. Things are getting sloppy. More accounts receivables were building up. And if these prices would slide off to what this 49 Farm Act calls for, our farmers in trouble, as soon as they're in trouble, we learn it at the oil station, we learn it at the elevator. We are in a fight all over the lot with the farmer who can't pay to tell him that he'll bust his cooperative unless he pays cash. Isn't that true? What do we do about it? We got other things to talk about. But what is the most important thing the farmers unions got in front of it today? What is the most important thing?
is to protect his price and his income so he can stay there and pay his bills, isn't it? Then he can buy insurance, can't he? Pay for it. Then he can agitate for MBA, and improvements in health, medicine, all those things which we're strong for. But what is the immediate thing? The immediate thing is this price thing, because the law is not maybe going to be written, it is here. That's the law, boy, and that's what we're down there for, fighting, trying to get changed. But we got it. As soon as the national emergency is over, we want it over with. Then he's in. We're in the armpits. And we're all in third of the armpits. And then the family type farm. They got the worries. They got the grief. They got the heartaches. Then they begin to pinch and save and get in debt, and we're in hell all over again. There is only one farm organization in this whole United States. There is only one organization in all the United States that's got a fight on. Score is Lake Norton 31, Castlewood 30. Here's the free throw. It's good. Castlewood 30, Lake Norton 32. Passes into Garvin by Miller. Garvin dribbles down over the center line now for Castlewood. Passes to Gerhold. Gerhold back to Garvin. And Garvin almost loses the ball, recovers it himself. Passes into Bartlett, way down the corner there. Bartlett into Miller. Miller fakes, tries a one hand. It's no good. Miller is just as cold now as he was hot in that first half. He hasn't been able to collect for a, a bucket here in the last half. There's a pass into Scoglin for Lake Norton. Tries a one-handed shot. It's good. Lake Norton, 34. Castlewood, 30. This boy Scoglin's playing nice ball out here for Lake Norton. Garvin has the ball. Passes to Miller. Miller to Garvin again. A bad pass by Garvin. There's a long pass down here. And it's a bad pass by Koistman. And it's Castlewood's ball out of bounds. Miller brings it down the floor for Castlewood. 
Passes to Bartlett. Bartlett back out to Garvin. Garvin's dribbling slowly now. Passes to Gerhold. Gerhold going way down to the corner. Passes back out to Bartlett. Bartlett to Gerhold. Gerhold trying the one-handed shot, and it's good. From the right on in the corner, the right-handed corner of the floor, and he makes the score. Blake Norton, 34. Castlewood, 32. Koisman brings the ball down for Blake Norton. Passes to Tormanen. Tormanen makes a bad pass. The ball goes out of bounds. Castlewood's ball out of bounds as Lake Norton takes time out. The score with about six minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the ball game is Lake Norton 34, Castlewood 32. Is Lake Norton 34, Castlewood 32. And as play is resumed, it's Castlewood's ball out of bounds. Rube Waltman hands the ball to Miller, passes into Garvin, back to Miller, back to Garvin. Garvin dribbles down over the center line, looking for someone to pass to. There he passes to Miller, Miller to Elliott. Elliott way down there in the corner. Passes back out to Garvin. Garvin fakes a shot, doesn't shoot, goes in for a one-handed shot, a beautiful shot there by Garvin. Scores 34 to 34, he's a long pass down to Tormanen. Tormanen shoots, it's no good. And the ball was recovered by Miller, but it's going to be a jump ball between Miller and Skoglin. Right on the free throw line, jump ball. The ball's taken by, nobody has it yet. Finally recovered, finally recovered by Corey of Lake Norton and he's immediately tied up there by Gerhold. It's a jump ball between Gerhold and Corey. Ball goes up and is taken by Elliott for Castlewood to Garvin. Garvin, tie ball game all tied up. Garvin passes to Miller. Five minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the ball game. The pass is to Gerhold. Gerhold trying to shoot there. He does shoot a one-handed shot and it's no good. Ball's recovered by Spencer. Spencer to Corey. Corey coming down the floor fast. All the way down into the corner. Trying to shoot there. He shoots a one-handed shot. It's no good. And the ball's taken by Bartlett for Castlewood. Dribbles on the floor fast. Passes to Gerhold. Gerhold shoots. No good. Miller recovers for Castlewood. Miller trying a one-handed shot from the free throw line. No good. Skoglund recovers for Lake Norton. Skoglund to Tormanen, to Koistinen, who shoots. No good. And ball's recovered off the bank by Spencer, who shoots. Still no good. And it's a jump ball now between Spencer and Elliott. Boy, talk about action. Four and a half minutes left to play in the ball game. The score all tied up. Lake Norton 34 and Castlewood 34. And timeout is taken as Spencer looks as though he has a nosebleed. And Rube Waltman uh, asked him if he wanted time, so they're taking time out. On the free throw line here by the Lake Norton basket. Ball goes up and it's taken by Corey for Lake Norton. Dribbles down, way down in the corner. Trying to shoot, closely guarded by Bartlett. Passes to Tormann and no good. And Elliott is fouled there by Spencer of Lake Norton. Very unintentional foul. He just couldn't stop himself and he run into Elliott and Elliott will shoot one shot. The score is Castlewood 34, Lake Norton 34. That's four fouls on Spencer of Lake Norton. Here's the free throw by Elliott, and it's no good. Gerhold recovers, shoots and misses. Recovered now by Corey. It's taken away from him by Miller. Miller passes to Bartlett. Bartlett shooting a one-hander. It's no good. Ball's recovered by Miller for Castlewood. Miller dribbles out, passes to Garvin. Garvin trying a shot from the free throw line. It's no good. Ball's recovered by Miller of Castlewood. He's trying to shoot but can't, and the ball goes out of bounds. It's going to be Lake Norton's ball. Koisten and passing into Corey. Corey dribbling down all the way to the free throw circle. Going all the way in there, trying a one-handed shot. It's no good. Ball's recovered by Skoglund. Jump ball between Skoglund and Elliott. Nice piece of guarding there by Elliott. Jump ball, Skoglund and Elliott. Ball's taken by Corey for Lake Norton. And he tries to shoot but can't. Passes to Tormanen. Tormanen trying a one-handed shot. It's no good. Ball's taken by Spencer. Ball's taken away from him by Garvin. Out of Castlewood. Garvin passes to Elliott. Elliott dribbling down over the center line now. Passes back to Garvin. Garvin fakes, dribbles, passing into Gerhold. Gerhold to Bartlett. Bartlett makes a bad pass, but it's recovered by Gerhold. And it gets right in. Nice shot by Gerhold. Making the score of 36 for Castlewood, 34 for Lake Norton. Skoglund has the ball for Lake Norton. Passes back to Corey. Corey trying a long shot. It's in and out, no good. And it's going to be a jump ball between Spencer and Elliott. Jump ball between Spencer and Elliott as the automatic timeout comes in. 
And the score is Castlewood 36, Lake Norton 34. And believe me, this is the third really good game we've had in a row. I shouldn't say that because we've had, this is the fifth good game today. This is the first game this morning. That score was Lake Norton 39, Bryant 38, one point. And the second game, it was Castlewood 33, Thomas 28, five points difference. And both games this afternoon ended in one point victories. And right now, there is two points difference in this ball game. Castlewood leading Lake Norton by a score of 36 to 34. There goes the ball up in the air now, this jump ball, and it's taken by nobody and goes into a jump ball between Scoglin and Elliott. The score is Castlewood 36, Lake Norton 34. Ball goes up in the air, and it's taken by Corey for Lake Norton. Trying to shoot there, he does shoot, and it's in there, but it's out again, no good. And it goes into a jump ball now between Scoglin and Elliott. Ball goes up, is taken by Gerhold of Castlewood, and a foul is called on Tormenton of Lake Norton. And Gerhold will shoot one shot. There is two minutes and 15, or should say two minutes and 35 seconds left to play in this basketball game. The score is Castlewood 36, Lake Norton 34. Gerhold is going to shoot one shot. Everybody's quiet. Here's the free throw, and it's good. Castlewood 37, Lake Norton 34. Koisten passing into. Corey, Corey makes a bad pass, but it's knocked out of bounds by Castlewood. And it's being taken out of bounds now by Corey for Lake Norton. He passes into Scoglin. Scoglin fakes, tries a one-hander, and it looks good. It's no good, it goes out. It was in there. I would have almost bet that ball was going to drop in, and all of a sudden it took a little half hop in that rim, and out it went. Jump ball, and the ball goes up, and it's taken by Scoglin, and it's a general jump ball between Scoglin and Elliott. And this boy, Elliot, is doing a wonderful job of guarding. And this boy, Scoglin, from Lake Norton, is playing a beautiful game tonight. There's another shot by Corey, and it's still no good. And Scoglin recovers. Scoglin passing to Spencer. Spencer to Tormenton. Tormenton trying to shoot, and Tormenton is called for a broken dribble. Castlewood's ball out of bounds. Two minutes, ten seconds left to play in the ball game. As Garvin passes to Miller. Miller dribbles over the center line. Passes to Gerhold. Gerhold shoots. No good. The ball is recovered finally by Tormenton for Lake Norton. The pass is to Spencer. Spencer dribbles all the way down into the corner, all the way underneath the basket, shoots, and it's no good. Ball's taken by Elliott of Castlewood. Elliott's going down the fourth pass. And the ball is taken away from him, but a foul is called on Corey of Lake Norton, I believe. Believe me, this game is fast. There's one minute and 57 seconds left to play, and the foul is called on Corey of Lake Norton, and Elliott will shoot one shot for Castlewood. Elliott shooting. One shot for Castlewood. Here's the free throw, it's in the air, and it's good. Castlewood 38, Lake Norton 34. And we have a little over one minute and 50 seconds left. There's a shot by Corey, it's no good. The ball goes out of bounds. No, it doesn't go out of bounds. It's passed into Corey, and Corey shoots, and it's good. Castlewood 38, Lake Norton 36. Miller bringing the ball down for Castlewood. Passes to Elliott, Elliott back to Garvin. One minute and a half left to play. There's a pass over to Bartlett. Bartlett trying a one-handed shot. It's good. Castlewood 40, Lake Norton 36, a minute and 15 seconds left to play. Corey comes all the way down, and the ball hits his foot and goes out of bounds. Castlewood's ball. We have Garvin passing into Miller. Back to Garvin. Garvin is taking his time now. Coming down over that center line. Passing to... Passing to... Garvin, who loses the ball, and Corey intercepts. Corey goes down all the way. Shoots, and it's good. Castlewood 40, Lake Norton 38, a minute left to play as Miller takes the ball for Castlewood. Passes to Garvin. Garvin over the center line. Garvin trying to get rid of the ball, finally passes to Miller. Miller back to Garvin. Castlewood is trying to stall. There's shot by Bartlett. Over to Bartlett. Bartlett's dribbling around. Passes to Garvin. Garvin is holding the ball now. Passes to Miller. There's 40 seconds left to play. And Miller is dribbling around the center of the floor. Trying to, looking for somebody to pass it to. Finally passes it back to Garvin. And Garvin is holding it now. Passes to Gerhold. And Gerhold almost lost the ball. There he goes. There's a jump ball with a half a minute left to play. The score is Castlewood 40, Lake Norton 38. There's a half minute left to play. A jump ball on the Castlewood free throw line. Up goes the ball. It's taken by Lake Norton. Corey has the ball.
ball for Lake Jordan. He's dribbling down the side of the floor. He tries a long shot. It's no good. And the ball goes out of bounds. And it's going to be Lake Norton's ball out of bounds. 15 seconds left to play. Spencer taking the ball out for Lake Norton. Underneath their own basket. Passes into Corey. Corey shoots. It's no good. Elliott recovers for Castlewood. Elliott to Miller. Miller taking his time now. Dribbling very slowly. Passes to Garvin. Garvin trying to get that ball over the center line. There's five seconds left to play. Passes to Miller. Miller holding the ball and now dribbling. There's two seconds left to play. There's one second left to play. As Miller passes to Garvin and the game ends. What a basketball game, what a basketball game. And the final score of the consolation finals is Castlewood 40, Lake Norton 38. And now I'm gonna turn you over to Ross Case before I give you a summary of this basketball game. I'll be back with you in just a minute, ladies and gentlemen. But first of all, while I get a chance to catch my breath, we're gonna hear from Ross Case. I don't know that I've ever seen a more exciting ball game. And I think the sponsors from Castlewood are just as excited to be able to bring this ball game to you. And here is a lineup of the Castlewood sponsors who were in on this ball game tonight. It's the Citizen State Bank, C.N. Halverson cashier, the Red Owl Store, Stubb Scalarud manager, Airway Store, Ernest Olson manager, Home Meat Market, Elmer Jensen proprietor, Ralph's Hardware, Mrs. Annie Raff proprietor, Ed's Cafe, Ed Hemp proprietor, Bud and Bill's Recreation Parlor, Hamlin County Republican, Jack Drummond, editor and publisher, Cole's Corner, Vance Birch proprietor, Castlewood Beauty Shop, just Right Theater, B.F. Kornman, McCormick Deering Implements and Standard Oil Products, and Elliott's Garage, Harold Elliott, proprietor. You just got done listening to the very, very exciting finals of the Constellation Championship between Lake Norton and Castlewood, which Castlewood won by 40 to 38. It was a tough ball game all the way. I mean, it was just touch and go all the way. Each team was in there all the time, tough fight, and a very, very fine ball game. Cliff, are you ready to take over? Here's Cliff Bobble to bring you a small resume of the past game. I was just talking to Tommy Young, the manager of KWAT here, and he tells me that due to unforeseen circumstances, it was impossible to actually bring you the broadcast of the second half of this basketball game tonight. However, that's going to be rebroadcast tomorrow night at 8.15. It was recorded, and it will be rebroadcast tomorrow night at 8.15. As you all know, the score at the end of the half in this ball game was Castlewood 21, Lake Norton 13. Well, when they came back out again after the halftime intermission, Lake Norton really caught fire and pulled up ahead of Castlewood. They were four points ahead of Castlewood with at the end with about five minutes left to play in the ball game. This boy, Scoglin, and I want to say something about Scoglin. I'm sitting beside a gentleman from Haytai here who tells me that this boy is really a basketball player, but due to doctor's orders, he was not allowed to play for the last week or 10 days. However, he did play tonight, and it was his first appearance in the tournament, and believe me, he showed that he was a good basketball player. He made 11 points and played very, very well on the floor. Of course, this boy, Corey, played his usual good game for Lake Norton and scored 13 points. Tormanen got nine points for Lake Norton, and believe me, there was a fine example of teamwork there, and when three men score 13, 11, and nine. And Lake Norton lost that ball game, and believe me, it was a tough one to lose. For Castlewood, Connie Bartlett scored six points tonight, and Gerhold scored eight. This boy, Gerhold, did some very fine shooting from the corners tonight, and scored eight points. Elliott scored five points, Miller scored 13, and as you know, he scored 12 of those on long shots in the first half, and in the second half, he was just as cold as he was hot in the first half. He could not hit the bucket, and all he got was one free throw, ending up with 13 points. Garvin scored six points, making the final score, Castlewood 40, Lake Norton 38. And now, I think I'll turn the microphone back to Ross Case, Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to remind you that Tommy Young will bring you the play-by-play -play broadcast of this next game, the championship game between Haytai and Esteline. Come in, Ross. Well, this is Cliff reminded you it's going to be the finals of the Hamlin Championship between Haytai and Esteline. But I think before we go into any of the sponsors or the lineups of the game or anything else, we're going to give you a little rest, listen to a little band music, let the boys warm up at this end, give us a little chance for fresh air, so we're going to turn you back to our main studios and down over. I think it's tremendously important. During the time I was in Europe, I spent some days up in Holland and a few days in Belgium and several days down in Italy. I'm sure you would be interested, and I should enjoy, if I had the time, to tell you some of the experiences over there. 
devastation of the war is something indescribable. You have to see it for yourself. You can see pictures in the newsreels and the movies of bomb damage and that sort of thing, but it still is different when you're over there and see it in the presence of the people who lived through that sort of thing. Factories are destroyed, transportation systems destroyed, highways, bridges. Some of the cities have been almost completely devastated. They're in an impossible position from the standpoint of balance of trade because they have neither the machine tools, most of them don't have the coal as yet, many of them short of fuel, most of them short of electricity to get their factories back in operation so they can produce the things that they can export in order to get the dollars with which to pay for imports. I found one thing that's very significant, and I found this unanimously among the hundreds of people I talked to in those four countries. Farmers, people you meet on the street, businessmen, working people, everyone would agree on this thing. The United States, practically speaking, is the only country that come out of this last war in a condition other than bankruptcy. <clears throat> if we are to have our industry and agriculture rehabilitated so that we can participate again as citizens in the world and in world trade, we can only do it on the basis of such help as may be extended from the United States. But, they said, we are amazed at the kind of war talk that goes on in the United States at the present time. They who are, have still been unable to dig out from under the rubble of the last war find it difficult to understand that we find it impossible to at least continue the discussions and negotiations with Russia about whatever difficult problems there are and they are legion. It's difficult for them to understand that the United States continues to beat the war drums for World War III. And here's what, without exception, people that I talked to said. I stopped indiscriminately at farms and stopped and beat those people on the street. And you find you do want to add to it. GTA has made it possible to do it. And anyone who wants to add to it, who wants to have information on their own program should see Mr. Taylor or Mr. Hoy. Now, uh, have we got any questions?